Welcome uh, to a late night chat. Late for some people, early for others. Yeah. Um, Jay Seam is working on that. How about if uh, Sabine, would you feel like... Um, I'm good. Okay, good. Dear folks of Baba, we have all had many precious and intimate moments with Baba throughout our lives. Moments when he has let us know he and his intimate love are here with us. It might be our first moment of hearing about him or at our first Baba meeting. His reassuring voice heard within at a very low point in our lives or an instance of Baba's matchless humor that has his undeniable signature. It might have been a time when we experienced him taking over in a most difficult situation that was impossible for us to face alone. It might have been a time when one of the Mandali shared something life-changing with us, inspired by Baba. It may have been an unexpected intuition that enabled us to avoid a dangerous situation. All these intervention, interventions and visitations from our beloved prove that he is intimately involved in our lives, whether we are aware of it or not. There was one Baba person who found herself in a mental hospital in the worst condition of her life. Her condition was so severe that one of the older inmates held her in her arms like a young child. This situation went on for weeks. One day, in her lowest moment of darkest despair, she called out to Baba in desperation. And deep within, she heard him say, this is hurting me more than it is hurting you. His clear words gave her the supreme assurance that she was not alone, that he was there. And this gave her the confidence that he would help her climb out of her deep despair. This was life-changing and has brought in her a lifelong gratitude to Baba. Baba has said, when everything goes wrong, the mind becomes helpless and it has to rely entirely on the heart. These are the moments when you resign to my will and so rely solely on my help. When you leave all to me, I dare not care not, and you are relieved from the predicament. What you share needed, needn't be your most vulnerable moment. There are many moments, large and small, that show how our beloved enters our lives. We know what it means to us, but think what it means to Baba to see us deeply touched by his love and our spontaneous gratitude. Please come and share some of his sweet, poignant interventions in your life. We are sharing past moments with Baba, yet we know there are always many precious moments to come. In his love, Jeff. Thank you. At four in the morning in Germany. And John, what 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 time is it in? Are you in Maribot or China? Oh, you're muted. Uh, you are oh, muted. Sorry, sorry. I'm in China now. Oh, what time is it there? Yeah, is my wife. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> sure, beautiful. So it's uh, we we meet with each other in 2011, I think, in Marabad. Uh huh. What? Yeah. It's, what? What time no, is it there in China? It, it's just uh, uh, it's uh, 10 a.m. 10 morning. Oh, oh okay. So just 12 so, hours time difference between okay. us. Yeah. Good. Well, I'm glad you're there. Wonderful. Yeah. I hope we hear from so you too. To see you again. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, uh, you know, I noticed uh, that, uh, Goer, you had your hand up at the end. Did you have, like, something to share before we plunge into this? Yeah, I had a poem of Rumi's to share, but it's all right. If, would you like me to share it now? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. It's a beautiful poem by Rumi. And I know Rumi was one of Baba's favorite poets, right? Yeah. <clears throat> um, so it's entitled Unfolding the Rose. It is only a tiny rosebud, a flower of God's design. But I cannot unfold the petals with these clumsy hands of mine. The secret of unfolding flowers is not known to such as I. God opens the flower so sweetly, when in my hands they just fade and die. If I cannot unfold a rosebud, this flower of God's design, then how can I think I have wisdom to unfold this life of mine? So I'll trust in him for his leading. Each moment of every day, I will look to him for his guidance, each step of the pilgrim way. The pathway that lies before me, only my heavenly father knows. I'll trust him to unfold the moments, just as he unfolds the rose. Jai Beautiful. Bhabha. Keep that on hand. We need to hear that <laughs> every okay. so often. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. You know, and, and in response to the, the thing that Oran uh, read, uh, there's a beautiful line, but just one line of a, a mystic poet, Sanai, where he says, as long as I feel you inside here with me, I cannot say I am suffering. So that's the great compensation. Okay, does anybody want to share <clears throat> a moment from your life with Baba or moments, something like that? Anybody? Uh, anybody ready to head out into the high seas? Uh-oh. <laughs> I, I can't go first. No. Uh, a moment... Let's see. Okay, we got Marion. Good. Okay. Uh, hi, thank you so much. And I'm, I'm not going to tell my most enlightened story. I have a cute one to tell. So, do cute count? Yes, yes. Humor I was cute. Yeah. <laughs> It's just touched my heart because today I happen to be thinking about it. I'm not quite sure why, because it was many years ago. I have two, I live in New York City, I have two grandsons that I helped raise three days a week. We were very close. They're now 23 and 19. So this is quite a ways back because they were about maybe, maybe three and six, whatever. So I never preached anything about Mayor Baba, but I had photographs around, you know, when they'd come over to for play dates and play in my apartment. And so I remember one asking what it was, and I said, that's, he did understand a little bit about God, even though we weren't religious and his family weren't religious, but they did have an understanding at that age about the word God, meaning something wonderful. And so I, I had said, it's God in human form. Once in a while, I might've said the name, but um, so one day I'm over there taking care of them at their house and their apartment, and I'm going to take them outside and they are being like Cain and Abel. They are fighting, they are carrying on. And I have all these tools professionally of how to, you know, help them and how to come in and with the right language and all that. And nothing was working, nothing. And I had to get them in a stroller. One was in the, going to be in the stroller, but he could get out of the stroller and run around. He wasn't a tiny toddler. And the other one, they were just at each other. So I had reached the end of my rope there. And um, I said to them, you know, I, I didn't know what to do to them to cooperate and get ready to go outside. So I said, this never happened before. I said, I'm, I just very calmly said, I'm going to ask God what to do. I didn't say Baba, but I said, I'm going to ask God what to do. So I sat down on a stool there and they got real quiet. 
And I closed my eyes and I just said Baba's name. I just kept saying Baba's name. Nothing unusual popped into my head, my brain, uh, an answer what to do for these two boys to get them to get their coats on and go outside. And so I just got very calm and kept saying Baba's name. And at some point I opened my eyes and the two of them were sitting on the floor, just looking up at me in such calmness and waiting. And I opened my eyes and the older one, who was probably around six, he said, Grandma, did you hear anything? And I <laughs> said, I said, yes, yes. I was told to get your coats on and get in the stroller and we'll go outside. So they went so obediently and so cooperatively <laughs> and got their coats on. It was like a miracle. And got in the, one got in the stroller and the others walking and we went out and out the elevator and out on the street. And that was it. Yes. Beautiful. It's a wonderful, wonderful moment. Yes. <laughs> You know, that reminds me, I was going to share something different, but what you said just reminds me. Uh, I was in Seattle back in the maybe late 60s, and I was, a buddy of mine, his, he, he and his wife had broken up, and they had a son who was about five years old, and he was uh, pretty devastated by it, and he was acting out. He was, like, difficult, and I would stop by um uh you know with his mother and everything and just play with him you know and kind of give a a little relief to her and and, and so i i come up with all these games and everything and he'd be very active but it, hours would go by i mean he was hyper and everything and normally you know that w that was fine and and give her a little bit of a break but on this particular occasion I had got a very uh, a sliver deep into my foot, and I was in a lot of pain, and I just couldn't go anywhere. I was just sitting in a chair. So I had to create these games which would take, you'd have to go off and do something, find me something somewhere in the house, and I would, you know, I would, I would buy for time that way. Then he'd come back and he'd be anxious again, and I have to come up with something else. And, <clears throat> A couple of hours went by and I was kind of like I was at my end of the rope of coming up with something. And so kind of like just um, out of exasperation, I had a book there that I had never said anything to about Baba to uh, this uh, his mother or him. But I picked up this book just out of exasperation. It was a picture of Baba where he's going like this. You're probably familiar with it. And I said, Aaron, who's this? He looks at me and he says, him's everybody's daddy. I thought, wow, oh my God, him's everybody's daddy. And I, I mean, that really like, I was in a much better state and everything. About an hour went by and I, I he started, you know, I, I started running out of things to do in inspirations and I picked up another copy of the discourses of Baba at an earlier time maybe back in the 30s where he's at the alphabet board and I said you know Aaron who is this you know he looks at it you know as if to say I've already told you him's everybody's daddy so that was a kind of uh, Marion's story reminded me of that it was just a delight there yes. in Seattle in around 1970. Anyway, anyone else? Oh, hey, while, oh yeah, okay, go ahead. Dina. Hi, I'd like to tell the story of the experience that happened to me when I got a divorce and I bought my new apartment. So what happened was I had a new radiator installed because it was cold in the bedroom. I didn't realize that they were coated with Rust-Oleum paint and that has been banned in California. And it sent toxic fumes into my apartment such that I could not breathe. 
I could not breathe at all. And so I finally, I, I tried everything. I, I let, let, let the windows open, even though it was the dead of winter, I left the windows open. I, I tried everything. Finally, I went to the Y because I couldn't stand it anymore. Let, stop a second. Uh, Tina, did you, um, did you know that it might have been the Rustoleum or you, you didn't know the cause of it, really? No, no, I didn't know the cause. <clears throat> yeah. But I found out that, that later. I found that out later. So anyway, um, I, I got to the Y and I got a room there, but I was still having trouble breathing. So I took a cab to the Roosevelt Hospital and I went to the emergency room and I died on the operating table. Wow. And I saw Baba in a long white sadra and he said, you're not on the list. And he pushed me through the tunnel. And then I came back into my body and I... I was okay. And so I think that Baba had something in mind for me. And I don't know why I was spared, but I guess I wasn't on the list. <laughs> <laughs> Good for us. Yes. <laughs> and so then... Um, I was in a Broadway show at the time, and the the met the light patterns made Baba's face on the wall on the back wall, and I thought it was my imagination. But one day, another actor said, "Do you see that guy?" <sighs> he saw him too, <laughs> and then. Um, one day I was coming out of the Amish market because I had to go into a sublet on 50th Street. And I came out of the Amish market and I saw Baba carved in the sidewalk. <laughs> so, but, uh, I mean, deliberately or just uh, happenstance? Happenstance. Yeah. Wow. So these were signs that he was with me. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. You know what? I think uh, we got VJ here somewhere. He was. Now he met Baba. I wonder if he can share something. Uh, VJ, are you still there? Oh, yeah. Hi, Jeff. I'm taking my breakfast. <laughs> and last night I. <laughs> I narrated all in my story meeting Baba. So, if you want, after some time, maybe after half an hour. Okay. Yeah. I meet her. Yeah. 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 You even if you just give it a snippet of that meeting, that would be nice. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> just give me half an hour. Sure. Yeah. Do the dishes too. <laughs> Sure. Okay. Thank you. Any anyone else have a moment or moments? I mean, I know you've had them. Oh, good. Hey, Baba. I know my name will be called because <laughs> my hand is raised. Uh, nothing special, but you know this. Um, yeah. Uh, this is a Baba moment in the sense that I was uh, traveling and I was at the airport and I checked in and everything and I'm uh, walking through the security and uh, I put all my bags in and they were all going through that thing that people check and uh, <clears throat> I was uh, and then the guy is screening me so put your hands up and everything and I came out and it beeped. Then uh, <clears throat> the guy looked at me and says, 
what sort of uh, on your uh, uh, you know uh, uh, on your chest uh, i didn't say anything so, is it jesus he said yeah it's jesus for me i was wearing a baba locket which i couldn't I didn't take it off when i went into the uh, the, the security check thing so <laughs> that, that that was uh, nice to know that somebody recognized baba as jesus <laughs> <laughs> beautiful yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and many times when people ask me here in this country uh, as to who he is and i found it easy to say that he is jesus for me you know and uh, it works pretty well <laughs> so that kind of thing jay bob beautiful prakash that's yeah. lovely yeah yeah, yeah th there was another moment when uh, it's not me who uh, you know we we were all uh, i was riding my brother in law to the airport with uh, three others in the car and uh, and i was driving and we had a good breakfast driving to jfk actually uh, lagadia i think and uh, <clears throat> we were all tired and i think i was driving i'm sure i was driving <laughs> and uh, halfway through i think i slept uh, and everybody did and then the car went across and uh, somebody hit us at the back really hard and then the car spun around spun around hit the railing on the other side and the first thing that i heard because we were all asleep and nobody knew and we were all in shock and um, the the first thing i heard was my son the elder son harsha uh, he said baba 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 loudly <laughs> and really you won't believe it that saved us and the car went and then it it hit the railing in the middle and then came all the way i was not touching the wheel because i have no control and then it just came went to the big shoulder that is there and then just boom it stopped so and uh, so that's my son's moment with baba <laughs> but we were all saved because of his taking baba's beautiful name. yeah just just spontaneously coming out of your son which is always nice to know yeah, yeah. how deeply baba has sunk into them yeah yeah jay baba Dina. i think she may have her hand left over i think go go on to diane no Where? i oh. i wanted to set, share an addendum yeah to the story um so I didn't know what to do with my apartment. I mean, I had just moved in. So I'm going to pin myself. So I I thought, well, I'll sublet it. So I had to get, have an arrangement with someone that, that they would let the real estate agents in. And so I got this guy and he agreed to do that, but he had some problems. And so one day I came in and I saw a bunch of beer bottles and whiskey bottles and liquor bottles. And then I noticed, um, some drugs that he was taking like lip lip i don't even lexapro or something anyway um but he was paid he had a hundred thousand dollars in the bank and he paid and he said he was looking for work so i thought well how bad could it be so I, I kept him. So uh, the one day he came in and he said, I came in and he said, you know, I have a book that I've gotten a lot out of. And I said, really? And because I didn't have any Baba books in there because I had given them all to the 
um, Mayher's center. And so he said, yeah, it's, it's comforting me. And he pulled um, a book off the top shelf of a floor to ceiling bookcase. And it was Glimpses of the God Man by Balna Tu. Fast forward, he later got a job. He, he had me write him a letter of recommendation. I wrote him a glowing letter of recommendation. And he, he got his life together. So I don't know if that was because of Baba or something else. But I thought to myself, did you have to go through, through, put me through hell to save this guy? So that's what I thought. Beautiful. It was the Rustoleum. <laughs> that guy, <laughs> that <Yeah>. idiot. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Jay Baba. Hey, Baba. Yeah. I, I'm still, um, as much as I believe in Baba, in my heart of hearts, I I still default, almost like a kid holding on to a, the door jams because they don't want to go and be pushed into the next room. I still find myself doubting. But because I was never somebody who understood faith. But when I think about how I have been in relationships and how I did not default to old behaviors, I that leap of faith tells me how strong Baba is in me, especially when they're dealing with things that I've asked his help for. And I haven't understood my behavior necessarily. I've just appreciated it because he's helping me become the woman that I wanted to be. Say Baba. Beautiful. He he's doing a good job. <laughs> he's done an excellent job. Tony? Yes, Jay Baba. Uh, I was sitting here thinking, thinking to Baba, you know, that um, there are so many stories. There are so many every single, every day there are more stories. And what am I really going to share? And I've shared lots of them already. And and something that's happened today or so. And, and then Prakash, just at that moment, told his story um, about the fellow ask, person asking about Baba's picture. And so that's what I'm going to share. I was on a train <laughs> and I was reading some, I don't remember which Baba book, but it had this beautiful picture of Baba. I, I was open to this beautiful photo of Baba. <clears throat> and a woman next to me, I think she was Hispanic, if I remember correctly. Um, lovely woman, nice vibe. She looks at the, she sees me looking at the picture. She says, what a lovely photograph of Jesus. And I said, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and I wondered if she ever thought about it that they didn't have cameras back then. <laughs> but she was right, you know. <laughs> okay, so Bobby gave me a story to tell. Jay Bob. Yeah, and these are like bright moments in our day, <laughs> you know. Uh -huh. Jay Baba. I must tell you this story. I was going uh, to Canada and at the airport, I had my chain. I always wear my Baba chain. So this person is saying, what's this? He's saying, I said, is Mary Baba. So he says, you're a Parsi? He's asking me. I said, yes. I said, Baba was a Parsi. I said, yes, he is. Uh, I said, okay. You are from Ahmednagar? I said, I'm not from Ahmednagar. Baba was from Ahmednagar. But he knew the whole story about Baba because of the, the, this thing, the 
person who was checking me was from Ahmadnagar. And he was talking to me so much about Baba that I said, my God, he's more interested in knowing about Baba than the, the thing checking me. What I have got, everywhere I've got as Baba, Jai Baba. Beautiful, yeah. Betty. Okay, hi. Oh, good to be here. Um, so. My Looks kind of sunny there. It no, can't be. It's, it's night. Not sunny. It's nighttime. Those yeah. are, those are our, our lights that we have around the table with flowers for Baba. <laughs> anyway, um, this is a a kind of today story um, that to express how things have developed for me, I've been around Baba for eight years and very um, slowly opening to accepting Baba as who he said he was. And um, so two health issues came along. Last year, I had um, a cancer diagnosis. I'm very, I'm very well now, everybody. And but I got the phone call that I didn't want to get. And I got the, um, the, the biopsy result on the phone. And I immediately went into prayer. And my prayer was for more Christ consciousness, more union with Baba. And I say that that was one of the best days of my life because it wasn't something I thought this is the right thing to do now. It's what came to me from my heart. And that was such a powerful indication that I was moving on the journey in the right way to fully embrace Baba. And so that was the, and I will tell you, I, I had surgery a few months later and in the whole time, ooh, the lights are going off here. The ho whole time, I never thought about my body. I simply thought about Baba. That's it. That was a miracle. And now I have another health issue which, and so that was a year ago, and I've been closer and closer to Baba, but not really experiencing Baba constantly like my husband does. <laughs> and um, so this diet, I haven't really been diagnosed yet, but um, there seems to be what seems to be a neurological malfunction. And everything spatially is off. Everything, everything, everything I do, every step I take is different than I ever experienced before. And it's happening very rapidly. So I just spent four months volunteering at the Mayer Center in Myrtle Beach. 
and we've been home for two two weeks and this is happening and <laughs> i've never been happier in my life i'm feeling baba in me every minute i keep turning to my husband ken and saying it's baba in me uh, i'm feeling a baba rush and i'm not thinking i will go and you know the medical test i i will do that but it's not about trying to get an outcome it's like this miracle of love inside me that Baba's, I said to Ken, my husband tonight, Baba's living in me. And I said, I don't regret one minute of longing because it prepared me for this great presence inside me. And I'm very awkward, like physically, I don't move gracefully right now because everything is off and I'm, I'm fine. I'm happy. So that for me is the story of a lifetime. And I'm, I'm happy. Like my friends see me and see I'm happy. <laughs> so that's it. Beautiful. Baba. Yeah, and she radiates. Even even when you didn't have Baba permanently there with you, she radiates so much love. And it just kind of flows. What a beautiful thing. Yes. Where it goes from the head down to the heart permanently. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> beautiful. Any other adventurous? People. Vijay has finished his breakfast, it looks like. Yeah, we, we we think that, you know, but he's gotta have, you know, his chai and, and Hello, dessert. Jay Baba. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm just uh, actually there is some interruption, net internet. So I am just setting my computer. Can you hear me? Yeah. We can we just see uh, your silhouette. We don't see your face, I and mean, we don't see the features of your face. Maybe you're maybe. backlit, as they say. Oh, yeah, you're backlit. Can you see me now? Better? So we can see your right cheek. No. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyway. Oh, well. <laughs> oh well, go ahead. Yeah, Jai Baba, Jai Baba. I'm Jai Baba, everyone. And uh, I'm Vijay, Vijay Bhalekar. And uh, I'm born in Baba family. One moment. So I have privilege to be born in Baba family. My father, Sulu Meshram, he was since 1938, he, he was with Baba uh, since the age of 14. And uh, so, uh, and he was, uh, Baba liked him. He was quite a, a dear, uh, like a, a residing mandli outside. Uh, Baba asked him to join the mandli in 1945 at Hyderabad and uh, uh, so and asked him whether he would like to. So he said, uh, Baba, my mother might take objection. So because I am doing my job also. And uh, uh, so Baba said, okay. Uh, so instead of staying for me, keeping him for two months, Baba sent him back in two days. And he said, go back and get married. And so in 1946, he got married. And I'm born in 1951. 
And I met Baba in 1953 when Baba called us at Nagpur. Uh, so Baba, uh, it was at Brigadier Varma's Bangla. And uh, Baba was uh, waiting for Sulu to come. And uh, then uh, we came and he touched my head and uh, then left. So that was my first How I old got were my you? First touch of Baba in 1953. How and then in 1960, oh. at Guru Prasad, we had chance to meet him. As uh, my father was a regular visitor to Guru Prasad, and 1955, Sevas also, he was there. And uh, actually, when he came to Baba in 1938, as a boy, Baba saw him and admired him and commented fit for the path. So in uh, uh, and uh, um, ask him to be, keep in touch with him. In uh, so in 1955, uh, maybe Baba have put him in the on the inner path, pushed him. He started seeing uh, lights, music, and uh, all those things. So uh, in 1955, when ba one day Baba was asking everyone each monthly about uh, uh, their routine. And uh, uh, Sulu said, Baba, uh, uh, with, uh, in front of everyone, I, I saw lights, full lights, it, uh, very bright light, uh, brighter than sun, cool. Uh, and Baba just stopped him. And he said, don't ever talk about your intimate experiences. So... Uh, it was his story and asked him to come to Guru Prasad every year. Uh, so in 1959, when he did not uh, come due to financial and uh, family crisis, uh, so uh, Baba sent him two pages later. Uh, two pages later, and they say, we were looking for you. Uh, and uh, Adi was writing, and Baba uh, Baba would be happiest to see you. So then in 1960, my father decided to come, and he took me along. And uh, I was uh, also uh, very keen on, because uh, since the my childhood, uh, I was uh, uh, drawn to him. And uh, I had very deep faith in him and I took him as God. So I was also very curious to meet him, my curiosity. So uh, on, on the train also, I remember the thoughts came in my mind that uh, how the first meeting with Baba. Had. And um, uh, I think, is there time or maybe there, there is a, can I speak? Yeah, just, yeah, yeah. Share your meeting there with Baba. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so uh, I was really very eager to see him. And uh, we reached Pune, uh, maybe on 7th, uh, June 1960. And my father stayed at uh, his friend's house in Ganeshkin area. And on 8th June 1960, uh, we went to Guru Prasad by bus, the city bus, took bus, and uh, it around 8 o'clock. And uh, when we reached there, because uh, only invitees were there, and uh, 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 it was uh, quite, uh, only Mandli were there and few invitees, and uh, 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 Baba was giving uh, personal uh, interviews. So uh, when I reached there, I just started looking for Baba. And uh, uh, so I came to know that in Guru Prasad, this room Baba is giving meeting. He's uh, calling each person one by one. And uh, uh, so I started wa walking near that room to and fro, try to peek in. And uh, then when I could not get his uh, view, 
I came to the window. I saw the window, and I came near the window, and there were shutters. So I just raised the shutter and peeped in, and uh, it was Bhagwan's face I could see. Uh, I was just watching like this, and I focused on Baba's face and got absorbed in watching his face. Eric's back was to to me, and Baba was talking to someone, person. And uh, when I, I was absorbed in watching his face, uh, after some time, I felt a, a pull on my collar, and uh, somebody pulled me. And I saw back, and of course, that time I didn't know he was Araj. So he was really angry at me. He said, how could, how dare you peep into Bao's room, whose son you are and all. And he was really very angry. And I was really very nervous. And so I, then I closed the shutter and uh, I was very sad. Uh, but after some time, Araj comes back again. He came to know that he's Sulu's son. So he kissed me, loved me, and uh, he really means uh, uh, kiss, uh, yeah, um, uh, loved me very much. And so I forgot all my <laughs> depression and uh, uh, I was happy. I feel elated again. Uh, after some time, uh, uh, the twins, uh, Rus, uh, they came. Running, running. Sulu, 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 taking my, my father's name. Uh, Baba is calling you. And so, see, you have to keep waiting there without resting a second. And so we just, he came with a very running speed. Sulu, 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 like some big event. And um, we rushed in. And uh, Baba, uh, Baba just uh, walked in. He was in the other room. And he just walked in and sat on the sofa very fast, wearing sadra, white sadra. And see, he had an accident before that. And he hardly was limping. And, and but in, uh, in the 1959 later, uh, Mandli described him that uh, surprisingly, Baba started wa walking because he otherwise he used to, I mean, the scratches uh, he was using. So uh, I was really, I was just stunned to see his beauty like an angel and very fast, very, uh, he just comes and sit, sat on the sofa uh, and he asked uh, Sulu, where were you on 5th June? 5th June, 10,000 people came for Darshan, but he was, <laughs> he remembered him. He said, very, very, uh, Baba, I didn't knew that I have to be there on 5th June specifically, and I didn't get my leave sanctioned also. And I was uh, watching, and then he asked him, where you are staying? And he said, uh, you can stay at Bindra house. Uh, Baba uh, he said, no, Baba, I... Uh, I'm staying at my friend's house. I made my uh, arrangements. And Baba uh, said to him, be on time. And I was watching. And then I kneeled down. I bowed down to his feet. And while kneeling, I looked at him. And I said, Baba, uh, I get scared in darkness. And Baba looked at me. And asked in gestures, do you take my name? And the thought came in my mind. I was holding my hand. Oh my God, he's God. And I must speak truth. And I was just looking at him and forcefully I said, no, Baba. Like I just shook my hand. And Baba said, take my name. And it was such a powerful command that Taking his name, so <laughs> that reminds me. You know, take my name, take, my, uh, and uh, still it shakes me. And uh, Baba, uh, I'm not satisfied whether I'm doing it all right or not. Uh, but I try to take his name whenever. Yeah. So that was my first encounter with him.
and uh, we stayed yeah. there for uh, four days so we enjoyed uh, meeting uh, means playing uh, cards and other there were so many events were there but i closed down here and maybe later sometime i will uh, say so yeah. jai baba thank you thank for you bj giving me opportunity yeah jai baba yeah beautiful yeah yeah you know kind of trying to sneak a view of the avatar i'm you know <laughs> okay anybody else um okay rich i just have a, a quick thought i was trying to think of something and i i've told this somewhere before but and i was so young and uh my brain in chaos but in india in 72 uh <clears throat> it was a night and uh, about half our group was in the Ashoka Hotel, and the other half was at Vilus Vila. And I think it might have been uh, one our first night there, I think. Or, but anyway, so we're all up on the roof of the Ashoka, and it's a beautiful night. There's a, It's dark, and there's a breeze, and, and we're all just really happy, the ones of us there. And all of a sudden, some guy comes up on the roof with a case of uh, beer. And this is from Soroche. And I had sort of a... We'll just say a Catholic religious background, but nothing serious. But but uh, I never had an interest in alcohol, and all of my cousins would drink beer at the family parties and stuff. But and so my instinct was this old traditional, we'll call it Sharia, right? Oh, no wine, no liquor, no women, no what you know, whatever. So that was my instinct. But here it's coming from Sarosh as a case of beer. I go over and look at pull a bottle out. I didn't want any, just a case of beer. <laughs> but it it was a shock to me because here I was in you know Ahmed well Ahmed Nagar but but basically at the tomb and this this guy that I knew who he was sends over a case of beer and I thought you know it just shocked my brain just exactly what Baba would do with uh, ascetics and people who you know, thought they were going to be more spiritual by ignoring their sin scars, you know, story. Thank you. Yeah. And Sarosh was one of the uh, the early Mandalis, you know, if in case you don't know. Yeah. Anyone else? Oh, good. Hi. <laughs> Is it me? <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Duplicate Betty's duplicate. Oh, oh, that's right. <laughs> We're the Betty twins. <laughs> Hi, Betty. <laughs> well, it's a very small thing, but it's but with Baba, everything's important. Um, I I trust totally that Baba will help me when I need to find my keys or my phone or my <laughs> or to catch an animal to take to the vet. It's very small, but. I always, always ask Baba, and he never fails. He never um, to help me. Whatever, it's often keys or, or um, um, anyway. So that's really all. But uh, it's there's something very. Um, he's just so reliably. If I remember him, he he does. He helps. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> yeah, where your do you know where your keys are right now? <laughs> oh, good. Peter, I haven't seen him. Peter's in the, at the center. He's inside one of the cabins. Might even be the upper one. Is it the upper room? I don't know what. I can't tell. Oh, green room. Oh, the green, the green room. room. Okay. Yes. Green Street. Green uh, Street. One Green Street, what they call it. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> um, anyone else? Oh, no, not me. I have to share something then. Oh, my God. Choose Marta. Choose Marta. Marta's always got something. Yeah, Marta's always got some good things. What do you think, Marta? Are you up for it? Let's see. 
Well, I was trying to think of something. Um, well, the first thing that came to mind, and I shared this before, but not everyone was there, is uh, uh, many, many years ago when I was in India, uh, back in the old, old, old days when Mansari was there, and I always would be the first one to get up to go up to clean the tomb. And um, so I did get up. I was the first one up in the pilgrim center, and I went up to the samadhi, and and nobody was there, and, and it was just starting to turn daylight. You know how it is in that early, early morning. And uh, so I uh, took my sandals off, and I walked up to the entrance of the samadhi, and I looked around, and uh, there was no uh, night watchman. And Mansari wasn't there, which was unheard of. Mansari was always there at the very beginning of the morning. And no one was around, and the door of the samadhi was open. And I thought, well, this is really strange. And in the samadhi on the left-hand corner, way against the wall, was a lantern that was lit, and that was the only light that was there. And I thought, oh, my God, nobody's here? And so I thought, oh my God, I'm totally by myself with Baba in the whole universe. So I bowed down and I went into the Samadhi and I just couldn't believe my good fortune. I said, Baba, Baba, I kept saying, Baba, how can I be all by myself with you? And it was dark except for this lantern. It was so dramatic and so beautiful. So I just lay down and I put my forehead on the, on the tombstone and then I laid, you know, prostrated myself and I was just taking all advantage of bowing down, as much bowing down as I could, which I love to do. And I thought, oh my God, nobody's here. And so I just stayed there as long as I could. And then eventually Mansari came and I told her no one was here. And she says, well, where is, where is the night watchman? I go, I don't know, but I got to be with Baba by myself. So that was the first thing that I thought of that was the best gift in the entire universe. I was alone with Baba in his Samadhi. It was just one of those beautiful, 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 lovely. beautiful gifts that just come sometime. Yeah, yeah. Really lovely. I'll never ever forget that. Lovely, wow. Okay, thanks a lot, Richard. You got your story. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Anyone else? Well, I'll tell, I'll tell, uh, if I can, let's see. Let me think. Uh, <clears throat> my, my most precious moment with Bob, of course, uh, was in when I, when he appeared to me at a Baba meeting back in 19... 68 in January, um, but I've shared that before. But then a year later, there was um, something that happened, and I'll share that. But you know, when I first got into Baba, uh, I, I, that first night in, in January of 68, I, I was lifted out of my humdrum life into a, a very sublime place, and um, <clears throat> and uh, you know, I looked down at my life, and I thought, God, do I want to go back there, you know, from where I was? I mean, I, looking down, it's like, God, that, that, I, I just came from that absurd place. You know, do I want to go back down into that world? So uh, back then, I did everything in extreme, and, my, and th on this occasion, you know, I, I vowed never to work again. I was just not going to go back down there and deal with the world on his own terms. I mean, you, I, mean I was crazy. <clears throat> and so I, this was in New York City. And then <clears throat> in the summer of, of you know, uh, 1968, I was in S Seattle near where I grew up. And I basically just bummed around, just kind of thought of Bob. I had, I had his presence and <clears throat> I didn't uh, have a job. I just, I had some friends, we'd make these big batches of soup or we picked berries and you know uh, from around and just drifted around 
<clears throat> for, and I, and in the process, I got way out of time and space because I didn't even know what day of the week sometimes it was or what month, you know. I mean, and when you're <clears throat> when you're not fixated on uh, any kind of schedule, mm -hmm. uh, you just it becomes quite timeless, and mm -hmm. one day could last a month. I mean, sure. it was taking <laughs> forever to get through, <clears throat> and then in the uh, there's somewhere in the, it might be the early fall, I can't remember. Oh, I ran into a couple of Baba people. I mean, uh, this is like the remote frontier of the Baba world, like the Yukon territory of the Baba world, I thought. But I ran into a couple of Baba people, and <clears throat> neither of them had jobs. They were just drifting around. But they were Baba lovers, and so we used to get together at this one place called the, the Hasty Tasty. Now this place was a truly, you know, uh, uh, a dive, a um, greasy spoon hamburger joint. They had a grill going on 24 hours a day, and it just, the, the oil, you know, the vapors would go on, and the windows were all kind of grimy, and people would come in there to sober up after an evening of drinking, or or, you know, there were obviously some in there were on drugs. This was in the University of Washington district. <clears throat> but for us, the, 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 the attraction was that for 10 cents, you could drink a whole afternoon of, of coffee. You just go help yourself to more or a whole evening. So this was a, a place to meet. So we would get there and meet and talk about Baba. And then news came. I don't know, maybe it had been the fall of 68, where Baba said that he would uh, be giving his darshan in the spring of 1969. Now, we used to get together and try to concoct some way of getting to India, maybe work on a boat or, or whatever. We'd have these discussions, but it never led anywhere. And, but we wanted to go, but we didn't, you know, I was, like I say, I was bound and determined never to work again, so. It was kind of ridiculous. And then, um, then one day we heard, uh, I mean, that Baba had dropped his body. This is the 31st of January, 1969. And I remember, I remember being in the Hasty Tasty, this, this place. And I remember um, hearing that and Baba's presence didn't change. You know, when I heard that he had dropped his body, it, his, presence just continuous. There wasn't like a suddenly a loss of presence. It just remained continuous, which was kind of surprised me. <clears throat> but anyway, we were sitting there about three or four days after Baba had dropped his body. This is maybe the 2nd or 3rd of February, 1969. <clears throat> and we're having our usual coffees in the afternoon, uh, only a few tables around, and Suddenly, Marion, who's at one end of the table, looks over at this chair next to me. She says, oh my God, Bob is sitting in that chair. And I started to turn, and Bob was like the light of a thousand suns. I couldn't even look directly at him. All I could see is the outer fringe of this brilliance. And, um, and it was like Bob was there for like, eternity. I mean, time stopped, and he was there with the three of us. And uh, and then after a couple of minutes, probably, it was completely outside of time, um, Baba, you know, left, and we were sitting there speechless. I mean, 45 minutes went by. We, we didn't say a thing. We just uh, were stunned, and we held hands, which is not something we normally did. And then eventually we, you know, our coffees were cold and everything. We got up and went on our way, left and we all went our separate ways, but we were so touched. Because, I mean, Baba from 10,000 miles away appeared to us uh, when we w weren't, wouldn't have been able to see him for the 69 Darshan. And then, like 15 years later, <clears throat> I was with Kitty having dinner one time, and she asked me about my college days. 
And I said, well, Kitty, I mean, I, I wasn't raised religiously, I had no religion, and I had no experience of God or the divine. And then I, then I remembered, you know, Kitty, I used to say this sarcastically. If anybody asked me about uh, God, I used to say, I don't believe in God. But if he would join me for a cup of coffee, that God I would give my whole life to. Oh man, I wept on the spot. I had no, I had totally forgotten that. And there Baba fulfilled that uh, longing, long before I even knew of him, you know. I don't believe in God, but if he would join me for a cup of coffee, that God I would give my whole life to. And Baba fulfilled that. Anyway, oh, Jay Baba. Thank, thank you, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this, uh, uh, hi, Jeff. Yes. Yeah, this, your story, uh, it was translated into Chinese on the, the Chinese Baba website. Yeah. So it's oh. an amazing story that we are we we all just uh, read the story and know the the incredible uh, it's uh, something like a miracle. Yeah. Baba do Baba did it. A very yeah, and, good story. And that latter part of you know fifteen years later. You know, uh, but didn't appear in that story because uh, yeah. that story was early on. But that yeah. that thing that I used to say, I was very surprised. Yes, I think that's a story. Is uh, it was in the uh, Mega Baba's next waves? Yeah, or or uh, showers of grace or something a like that. Of like grace not too, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. yeah. Well, we got a few hands there. <laughs> Rao. Yeah. Hey Ralph, how about moving up a little closer to the camera? You're just like a a face back there in the Yeah, there's no no light. The light is doesn't work in this room. Yeah. Yeah. Where am I? Okay, I don't see it. Yeah, you're there. Um, can you hear it? Can you hear sure. me? Sure. Yeah. So, uh, in 1968, um, I learned of Baba and dropped out of college. And, uh, and, uh, somehow coming across some pictures of Baba and literature. And, they, and um, <clears throat> I was living with my parents and working a job with the idea that I, it, the literature I had had the address of the Mayor Spiritual Center. So my parents lived in Maryland and I had decided I would make some money and go to the Mayor Spiritual Center. And uh, I'd been living in Texas, going to, supposedly going to college. And um, there with friends, there was, a few people who also came to Baba, Chris Barker and Eric Lawson and others who have sympathy, a lot of sympathy for Baba. They don't say anything about, you know, they don't come to the center or anything like that, as far as I know. Oh, yeah. Chris Barker is on the center right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. 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 yeah far out. So um, I, I, le I left Texas and my place there where Chris Barker and I lived in the same house and Eric, we got together. We all went to the same school. We got together very frequently. And um, I was having problems from bad drug experiences. And uh, when I heard of then, 
I had heard of Baba before that, a TV show with Rick Chapman and Alan Cohen, which would have been probably late 67 or sometime in 67 or 68. And then I went back to the, the time I was in Maryland and went back to college at the, during the summer, went back to Texas to school and got all messed up on, I'd never taken drugs. And we got down there, got into taking drugs. And I uh, got all messed up. Was seeing ghosts. It was horrible. Couldn't sleep. And uh, would see these ghosts and hear them. Eyes shut or closed. It didn't matter. It was worse with my eyes closed, I think. And um, Chris's girlfriend brought had gone to San Antonio to like a miniature World's Fair in San Antonio. And, and Baba lovers were there distributing brochures and talking about Baba and showing films. And she came back with literature. And in the meantime, I had resorted to reading the Bible and about the, I, would, I was reading about the Buddha and uh, Sri Ra, I had just found a book in the local library a biography of Sri Ramakrishna, which impressed me immensely. And then I don't, I remembered Baba, but I didn't know how to find him. So here came the literature from Chris's girlfriend. And then I saw the address and I quit school. And why I didn't go directly to the center is a mystery to me. But I went home and went to work. And then on Christmas Eve, 1968, or the night, the day after Christmas, I called the center on the telephone at night and Elizabeth Patterson answered the phone. And I told her, and my father had taken away my privileges to use his Volkswagen, which was like a spare car. And he had just given that to me for use, you know. And he was so upset that I dropped out of college. He, he said, well, you're going anywhere. You'll have to go <laughs> best way you can figure out. I'm not letting you use my car. And um, so I hitchhiked. I told Elizabeth that I'd be hitchhiking. So she said, well, when you get to town, Go to the Greyhound bus station and call us, and someone will come and pick you up. And that was the case. That's what happened. And um, so I uh, actually was picked up by someone that was from the same town in Texas that Chris and I lived in. And that was Nick Coleus. And um, so that sort of amused me or, you know, I didn't know what, I mentioned to Nick, who's a very laid back fellow and he, he, he just, just acknowledged it, it with, you know, through a nod of the head, so to speak. And we got, he took us to uh, the house called Del Ruba where Elizabeth lives like Del Ruba was Baba's name for Elizabeth, I think. And um, I didn't meet her, but Kitty came to the door and we went in and she said, go in here. She opened, there was a living room with the fireplace, the fire blazing. And a couple of young people were sitting around listening to Margaret Crask tell stories of Baba and Ruth White was there who was a hundred years old at the time and um, spent time I, Margaret said something that impressed me because I really still didn't have an idea who Baba was or what the center was and uh, 
So what Liz, Margaret said something about whatever the subject was, it had to do with that you had to, that she said it was then in Baba's hands. And it impressed me that that was an awfully important thing, important thing to leave in someone's hands. So, so that impressed me that Baba was beyond what I, gave me sort of a clue, you know. Then I just said, they put me in, uh, it was either the far or the near cabin, I'm not sure which. And I spent the next day and another night and then hitchhiked. Then it was uh, Hetty Johnson took me from uh, my room or from the original kitchen, wherever I was, to the gateway where I again got onto 17 and was it was prearranged that I would go to uh, Miami to rendezvous with Chris and a bunch of friends for a rock and roll concert, big rock and roll concert at a, at a racetrack in Miami. So Hetty took me there and I got, I got a ride. I was feeling really at sea about anything. And all I remembered was that I got in the car, greeted the person I, that picked me up, and everything was quiet. And I realized that within myself, uh, Baba's name was going was going on. And that really, and that I found that done. I don't know how it was. It was just there. And I said, I need to perpetuate that. I need to keep that and perpetuate it consciously. I want to keep saying Baba's name. So that was good. Yeah. Beautiful. I mean, that's the, you came away oh, with the most valuable, one of the most valuable things in life. Yeah. And might have gotten it from Kitty or Elizabeth, or you know, just being around them. Yeah, well, Baba was still a, alive at that time. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let's get Janet Jacobs. <clears throat> Uh oh, we, you're on mute. Okay, can you hear me now? Yeah, good, good, yeah. Okay, so um, <clears throat> back in 2004 and 2005, I read Meher, 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 Mera. And, um, you know, I, I really loved it. And I thought to myself, oh, how much I would have loved to have lived at Marizad for, you know, I just would love to have experienced living at Marizad. And, and that I just dropped that in. I mean, that was just in my heart. I didn't anticipate any more than that. And then in 2006, I went to India and was there for quite a period of time. And it turned out that, um, Everyone who was there at, at Marisad, taking care of the ladies and everything, um, went on vacation, like um, kind of all at the same time. And, that, and so Corinne came and was doing the doctoring. And they asked me if I'd come and stay with Manu um, because she was having issues at that time, stay in the little Jessawala bungalow area. And um, so I did. <laughs> so I was there for about a month at, at Marizad um, with the ladies. And I mean, I was with Manu. I stayed with the Jessa Wallace, but I, in those days I did different kinds of massage and body work. And I worked on Katie and, Ma and Meru and Arnavaz as well and and lived the Marizad lifestyle. I, you know, I, 
felt the feeling of how it was for them to all the days that the pilgrims came have to having to get themselves ready and up for it regardless of how they felt and just the whole um the whole feel of being there and um yeah and and um Ma uh, Marwan gave me permission in the morning I did my prayers in Mondali Hall and I also did my exercises in Mondali Hall I mean I'm laughing about it now I mean because I think about it and it's like oh my god I was doing yoga and Pilates in Mondali Hall but it 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 was at I realized that Baba granted my wish without me kind of, I mean, it was a wish from my heart, but I certainly didn't anticipate that it would ever come to pass. And so Baba gave me that experience. And um, so it, uh, you know, what else I notice is that for me, Baba's presence in my life is, I don't feel it in the way that, it, you know, it just brings tears to my eyes, that kind of way all the time. I, it, it comes and goes that way. But I do feel just like in this experience that, and I, you know, do all my things, give the day to Baba and rest my soul and Baba and all. I'm not trying to make light of them, but I, I do those things. And I, little things happen, not, and some bigger things happen. And I can feel how Baba is, 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 is guiding my life. And even when I don't just feel him strongly, but of course I love when it happens that I feel him strongly and, uh, you know, so those gifts come and go. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, that could have been the highlight of your life, that period where you got, <laughs> to, see, got to see Marizad from the inside. Got to see Marizad what, from the inside. And how they rose to the occasion for all of the pilgrims coming. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. feel feel like I was... I mean, part of it. I mean, I not. I didn't. I was part of it, <laughs> so to speak. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really a Beautiful. wonderful, wonderful Beautiful. opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, that's great. And I mean, it, it's like there's that feeling inside. Is like, how did how did that happen to me? You know, I don't know. I mean, it wasn't like I earned that. It was just a gift. Yeah, I remember. Uh, it, how it, did it happen, Janet? Were you, I just... I think you said, but I've forgotten already. Were you were <laughs> I, I mean, you were there, and of, uh, uh, Erich's mom. It was his, Erich's mom. Erich's right? sister. Erich's sister, Manu. Sister was, they, but but they, what happened was that uh, Kelly and, remind me of the women who work there right now, they're not yeah. in my brain but anyway the women who worked there like uh, that were taken care of of katie and and arnavaz and Ma Ma meru and 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 manu they all went it was um it was the end of september and they were going back to the states for for a while and it happened that they all left at once and what? um that's how it happened so <laughs> They asked, I was asked if I would come and stay with Manu and kind of watch over her to a certain degree. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and beautiful. and do be there and be with the other ladies in, in the capacity that I had been. So, yeah, I... Yeah, no, lovely, lovely. Mm -hmm. yeah. I bet you were able to apply your massage skills a lot. I was able to what my massage skills? Yeah. Use your mas massage. Oh skills. yeah! Oh my! I worked. I I have to say I, I did work. <laughs> I wasn't yeah. just sitting around. I was yeah. working. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Anthony. Anthony. Oh. Hey, hey, J. Bob. Everyone. Wow! Yeah. Great story there, Janet. I just 
I don't know, coming from younger Bob lover, just it means so much getting to hear this stuff because, you know, that's the only link we have to that time is just hearing it through you guys. It's it's just awesome. Um, yeah, I'll keep it brief. I know it's getting late here, but, you know, when I think of extraordinary uh, just Baba moments and how he's worked in my life, I don't know, just looking back at the guidance that's happened over the last, like, 20 or so years being on the path it it just blows my mind the amount of um i don't know you know when you're around certain people or a certain group and you can tend to like get into that mind state and and start believing the way they believe and you know kind of get stuck there uh just looking back now i can't believe how many different influential people and spiritual groups and you know even bad influences and different things I've been around and how it seems like Baba's kept me with each one of these things for just long enough to like kind of teach what it's about get the lessons and then he'll dissolve it he'll get that person out of my life he'll end this group you know he'll send me over here and I just can't believe how every one of those things have like perfectly led to his feet. And I don't know, it's just, it's beyond me. I, I don't know how that, that guidance has happened. Like, why didn't I like get stuck in any one of these groups and just, you know, end up whatever a devotee of Yogananda or a Hare Krishna or into the, you know, out of the out of body experience, like a cult, stuff that I used to kind of you know be into in college and I don't know there are just so many places to get caught and I just feel like what did I do to deserve that level of guidance where he just knew how to you know perfectly screw this up at this time to get me out of here and at the time it's like oh my god this this is terrible why is this happening but it was just all to like save me from getting stuck in these different little chapters that I could have just hung out in forever. And so I don't know, it's just a miracle. I can't figure out how all of this has led to here or <laughs> why I deserve this. Cause I don't really feel like I've lived a particularly like great life or anything. So I don't know. It's yeah. pretty, <clears throat> pretty neat. <laughs> I remember Darwin, when he went there with the three incredible weeks with something like 17 or 18 other Western men, and he would say, you know, there are, you know, there are mu people on the earth far more worthy than me to be here. What am I doing here? You know, but he said, well, I just, I guess I have to make the most of it. <laughs> He's there. You know, it's... Even someone like that, you know, you've been with Baba for 20 years or so at the time. What am I doing here? How did this happen? It's, it's a gift, you know, and it's a gift that's kind of undeserved in, at, at some level. It's just a pure gift. Sure yeah, well, we'll finish with Tony here and then it's, it's uh, getting up there past the few be bedtimes so not in I, china or anything <laughs> like that not in germany but you know for sure here on well, the west coast east coast of america yeah go ahead tony well speaking of china when jan yan shared before i thought well here's something else <laughs> that, that strikes a chord i worked at the un for 30 years mostly as a, a press officer information officer and in um, 93, I was sent to cover the Fourth World Conference on Women in Beijing. And uh, I I usually could work a trip. to When I had a trip like that, I could usually stop over in India for a month or three weeks. And then I did that. And then I went to my, my job. And there weren't... A, Hillary Clinton was the main speaker at the time. And... Uh, Geraldine Ferraro was there, who was much more um, accessible. Um, and and the um, very few people there spoke English, which was unusual, a little difficult for some of us. Um, but there were a lot of Chinese um, college students who were assigned by the foreign ministry, I guess, to uh, uh, 
look after the people at the conference. And it was a little unusual. Like they'd, we'd go to our hotel and there was one one young person who had had a, a place at the podium near the elevator. And his job was to write down anytime you went into your room or left your room. <laughs> um, and I didn't have much work to do because I was there to um, cover press conferences that arose. Oh no, oh, no, wait, no, I'm confusing that with a different one. That would, no, that was um, Vienna. In any event, um, one young woman who was among these uh, college students uh, took me on a tour one day when I was off to all the sites in, in Beijing and to the, um, um, Oh, I forget the name of it now. Where the it's great. excuse yeah, me? Great. Yeah, it's very it's great to hear uh, hear this. Yeah, your experience in Beijing. It was yeah. wonderful, and she took me to the uh, uh, it, this big plaza. It was where the Tiananmen Square stuff had happened a few years earlier. Google, the Google, um, the palace and then she, of the palace of Empera, Empera, I think. Empera. Mm -hmm. It had a different Paris. name, but yes. Paris, and then she Paris. took me to a, a holy mountain. Uh, wow. And then at that point, she was then, a fellow was tagging along with her who she said was her boyfriend. But it, I think it was just so I wouldn't get any ideas, you know. Uh -huh. uh, but um, on the last day of the conference, I always, I always in all my years at the UN, I always wore Baba's picture. And people uh -huh. would, in New York, you know, people would see me in the hallway day after day for years and never notice it and then suddenly out of the blue say oh who is that you know um well when i was in beijing on the last day uh, a young woman college student came up to me and they were all looking at me and there was a bunch of college students and she was sort of delegated to to approach me and she said sir i just wanted to ask you a question and yes we have been noticing all these days that you're wearing this picture with this man on it. And he's so beautiful. And we all just <laughs> want to know who is he? <laughs> and so I told him whatever I could about Baba on the last day of the Fourth World Conference of Women. And, and there was not, as far as I know, there was no following in China at the time. I mean, we know Baba went to China, but yeah. it was it was... It, it, there was such a pent up longing to know more about Baba just from seeing his picture. It was a, a yeah, point. yeah. Just uh, the few days ago, I, I knew some somebody in 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 Beijing. Mm -hmm. They they get a Baba meeting with huh. each other, and mm -hmm. maybe ten or ten people. Now they they organized a meeting in Beijing. It's a very good good experience for them. Yeah. It's great. It's, I had the feeling yeah. Bob sent me to just to to make a connection. <laughs> yeah, so, maybe I, <laughs> probably. I think. Yeah, probably. And what what year was that percent. roughly? I believe that was nineteen ninety three. Um, yeah, yeah. I had my, I guess it was forty first birthday there on September four. So that was yeah. in the midst mm -hmm. of the several weeks. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Great. Well, I think. We uh, uh, let's see. Anyone have a, a a reading they want to share? We usually get one from Goer. Uh, yeah, I have a quote, Jeff. <laughs> oh, good. Yeah. Baba says, "If born willingly, physical and mental suffering can make one worthy of receiving spiritual healing." Yeah, read that again. Yeah. If born willingly, physical and mental suffering can make one worthy of receiving spiritual healing. Jaipa. Beautiful. Yeah. So does does that apply if you were born unwillingly? <laughs> yeah. How do you born spell born. that? How do you spell that born? B O R N E, born when you bear something. Yeah. There's something, yeah. Yeah. Really yeah. Yeah, that that um 
Yeah, he, uh, Erich used to say, um, be careful, of, uh, uh, this aren't the exact quotes, be careful of suffering because uh, you can get addicted to it mm -hmm. in, the, in the positive way, not, uh, not just in the negative way, but you can get, and they, and the mandala certainly bore tremendous suffering. Hey, well, let's have a few uh, moments of silence. Just yeah. to, uh, uh, oh, the uh, uh, the poet Simap said, "Ab kya batau? Main tere milne se kya mila? Irfan e gham hua mujhe, dil ka pata mila. What I got after meeting you, I felt a, a mystical pain in my heart, and that led me to the uh, to you." I got the address of my heart, where heart, without pain, how could we know that the, where is our heart? Actually? Beautiful. So, yeah. So, well, you get that. That's, that's the address. <laughs> pain Street. <laughs> okay, let's have a few moments of silence. Okay. Hey, Baba. Thank you for staying up late or waking up early, as the case Jay may Baba. be. And I will, huh, Jeff, I will add further in this that Baba gave him liberation. Even the person, Sima, he was not there. He was maybe some 50 years back. But Baba liked the uh, poetry so much that he gave him liberation. So it's... Yeah, Simab. Yeah, he, he stopped the singing in the middle of the program when they were singing Simab's poems, and he yes. said, "I am so pleased I have liberated him." Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> and and Erich said, a "Nice week." Yeah. And, and Erich said, "So start from now, writing all the songs that you can and the poetry that you can, and maybe someday Baba will hear that poem." and have the whim to liberate you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, you have a, a nice week. Yeah. And we'll see what we come up with. Love to... Thank you. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Jay thank you for Jay sharing. Baba. Yeah, Jay thank Baba. you all. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Thank you, Jay Baba. Jay Baba. Thank you. Jay Baba. Thank you, Jeff. Jay Baba. Thank you. Jeff. Yep. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you all. Yeah. Thank you, Jeff. Yep. Jay Baba. Enjoy the center, Peter. You're in the right spot.